I'm Akshita Ananda Gopal reporting from the heart of Delhi and I was rather surprised to get a hot piping cup of filter coffee here in Delhi reminding me of course of Chennai and that was courtesy my meeting with the Tamil Nadu BJP chief Mr. Anamalai. Anamalai Vanakkam, Vanakkam to Delhi. What brings you here on this winter? Uh, good question, winter. <laughs> Uh, we have come for the MCD election, so we are tasked by the party to come here and uh, Delhi of course has got a huge Tamil population here. So a lot of our people vote in the election and I uh, have come yesterday, day before yesterday here because we wanted everybody to unanimously support our BJP candidates and help them win. That's the reason I came to Delhi. I think it gives me a sense, when I first heard about this, the first thing I searched is what is the kind of South Indian vote in Delhi and I think there are lacks of Tamil voters in the national capital as well. It tells you that the BJP is also pulling all stops for the MCD election. You've come down, flown down from Chennai. What's your assessment of the election? What was your campaigning experience like? Um, last 15 years, uh, the MCD is with the BJP and people are very happy. Now, there is a direct comparison they can do between the Aam Admi Party. Seven years they were in government uh, as the chief minister, as ministers. And 15 years of BJP's track performance in uh, the local body sphere. So I am very confident, I am very confident that despite uh, the Aam Aadmi Party's negative and very intensive campaigning, people will continue to trust the BJP uh, uh, candidates because many candidates are like a family to them because the local party, uh, the local body polls generally goes more than a party. It goes more with a sense of uh, a belonging, more with a sense of a candidate's personal touch. I am sure everything will help uh, the candidates and the BJP to sail through the line. I'm curious to know though, uh, Anamala, when you're campaigning in Delhi, uh, do you speak in Tamil or do you speak in Hindi? I speak in Tamil because it is mainly for the Tamil voters here. Of course, a lot of other uh, people also, they come, uh, brothers and sisters, yesterday and the last two points uh, where people come from different states, they have come. Somebody wanted me to speak in Hindi also. With my, with my broken Hindi, whatever <laughs> I can, I can explain, I could explain. But more than that, it's the sense and the spirit they want. Uh, many times the language itself will act as a barrier, but once you get that spirit going, people get the message what they want to hear. Okay, all the very best to your party for the MCD elections. I want to focus on some issues now from the state of Tamil Nadu. You just a couple of days ago uh, mentioned the Prime Minister's visit to Chennai for the chess Olympiad, one that was very high profile. I remember I was there covering it as well. You said that there was a security breach, that there was a lapse as far as the security for the Prime Minister is concerned. Why did you allege that? I know that there is an intel note that's been put out, but the DGP has claimed that there's been no such lapse. And there are two things. One, uh, right after the Prime Minister's visit, the state intelligence, they themselves agree mm. that uh, many of our uh, bomb detection equipments have failed the test and many of the HHMD, the handheld metal detector and the door frame metal detector, they were not functioning to the optimum level to which it was expected. Mm. So the, the, the state senior officers, they conveniently write a letter blaming it on SPs. I will give you three months time, please fix everything and get back to me. The letter itself very clearly they say, the performance were not optimal, many instruments have failed, especially in the Nehru Stadium when the chess Olympiad function was happening and the Honorable Prime Minister came. Mm. So they are trying to hide it under the carpet. The first question we are asking is, why did it fail? The second question, why did you bring a failed equipment to the Prime Minister security? Now DMK can conveniently... No, are you saying it's intentional then? I'm not, I'm not saying whether it is intentional or not intentional, ma'am. I'm saying first accept a mistake has happened. Second, find ways to fix it. If you don't accept a mistake has happened, next time also you will make the same mistake again and again. Of course, the Prime Minister's proximate security is with the SPG, the inner ring. We are talking of the outer layer of security where thousands of people come, they go, mm -hmm. and all those equipments have failed. I'm meaning all those in the sense, a significant number of equipments have failed, not performing to the optimal standard. Now the DGP can deny that no, 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 the central government did not communicate to us, the central government never spoke to us, me about uh, instrument failure You're and all. There's no communication from the can DGP, DGP, can DGP, I am again challenging the DGP now, can the DGP openly say none of the instruments failed and there was no note written by our intelligence office to all the SPs, can he at least accept that it has failed? Because the same DGP, I remember a few weeks back, he gave a rebuttal to our statement saying, you are uh, unnecessarily sensationalizing the Coimbatore cylinder blast. Nothing is happening, everything is in control. Then when we gave a counter answer to him stating this, this has happened, he is yet to respond to our previous allegations only. The, the DGP of our state, even now he doesn't agree to the fact what happened in Coimbatore is an ISIS suicide bomb blast. Because he simply toes the state government's line. That is very unfortunate 
seeing this from a very professional officer. See, you brought up the Coimbatore blast, and I, I remember when what happened in Mangaluru as well in Karnataka uh, of the uh, blast that took place inside an auto, which was a cooker blast essentially. And there are a lot of comparisons that are being drawn of the two. Now, the DMK, if you look at what happened in Tamil Nadu, the NIA took over the investigation in a matter of three days. It was the same in Karnataka. And yet you said that what happened in Karnataka and how the police dealt with it is how the Tamil Nadu police should have done. Correct, ma'am. The reason is, even if the NIA has taken over the case 15 days later than what they took over in Tamil Nadu, we will not have a problem. Provided the state government has said it's a terror attack, we are probing all the terror angle, we are going to do that. The NIA taking over after two weeks also doesn't matter. But the day one, the Tamil Nadu government said it's a cylinder blast. There is no terror angle. That is where we are very apprehensive. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I spoke a couple of weeks ago to the Tamil Nadu finance minister, uh, Mr. Tyagarajan, and he said this. He said it was a cylinder that went off. So it is a cylinder blast. Why are we reading more beyond that? Uh, and uh, let's wait for the investigation by the NIA. If the NIA is looking into it, it means the government is taking it seriously. So why are we then saying that the government didn't do enough or isn't recognizing it to what it is to be? The finance minister should also understand, uh, anybody can defend uh, the government's point of view and as being a minister he has to defend, no questions about it. But he has to understand, sometimes the defensive should not look as idiotic. In fact, the state government did not even bring UAPA charges, still BJP question. Only in the third day, a UAPA act was brought in, a simple act of UAPA was brought in, which made it a terror angle. Now the finance minister of Tamil Nadu is only trying to do a simple thing, he's trying to defend the indefensible. Everybody knows it's a terror act. Government has to acknowledge. Second, everybody knows intelligence has failed. There are two angles to it. The very specific alert, which we have disclosed the document also in a press note, very specific alert, the government has failed. Mm -hmm. Now, they can't hide everything under the carpet. We all know when DMK comes to power, for the internal security and for other things, the, the government always gives a short script. And clearly, the Coimbatore blast, it's a clear failure of government missionary, functioning of government, I only felt after seeing that interview of U.S. with the finance minister is trying to defend the indefensible. But why do you uh, believe that at least you, you just uh, leveled the blame against the Tamil Nadu chief minister, against the government as well? Do, are you trying to say that they don't care about national security? Are you trying to say they don't care about internal security? Because you're saying that they're trying to cover up the Coimbatore blast essentially, not show it out to be a terror, uh, uh, you know, a case of terror, or at least look at it like that or declare it as that. Why do you think that is? Or why do you uh, at least allege that? 1998, when the Coimbatore bomb blast happened, when close to 58 people died, uh, if I can take you back to those times, uh, especially the first one, 10 days of conversation that happened in Tamil Nadu, when Kalingir Karnanidhi uh, Avarakal was the chief minister of the state, it was run on the same line like what is happening in Coimbatore now. They say, no, no, you are blaming unnecessarily one community, you are blaming unnecessarily one person. This lesson looked like a terror attack. This is after the 58 bodies were there in the ground, the day one after the terror attack. Now, DMK, we always know they go for an extra bit of religious appeasement, extra bit more of religious appeasement. In this case, they don't want to disclose the name of the person. You would be very surprised when the UAPA charges were framed. For the first time we have seen, for the first time we have seen, they have said Coimbatore people, uh, police have booked this many people under this thing. No section was also mentioned. Because they don't want people to think in any way it is connected to terror. Anyway, these this names are connected to terror. Because it starts from their blood. The extra bit of religious appeasement, it creates all sorts of troubles in Tamil Nadu. Especially Tamil Nadu is becoming a safe haven for all kinds of anti-national elements. In Erode, we don't have any ISIS connection. Three months back, they lifted one fellow from Erode because he purchased a truck. He wanted to do a Paris style of truck attack. Salem, they picked one guy because he was indoctrinated by ISIS. But side. if they're picking up these guys, then it means that there's action being taken on the ground. It was picked up by IB at different points of time in the last three, four months. So what we are trying to say is, why suddenly Tamil Nadu is under the anti-national elements radar after DMK has come to power? Then Coimbatore blast. All these are small, small signals coming from the ground. DMK government is refusing to pick the signal. If they have acted on the proper intelligence, even the Coimbatore, that blast would not have even happened in the first place. That you're is where saying, my argument so is. You are saying terror elements are on the rise in Tamil Yes, 100% they are on the rise. And you believe that ISIS and the likes and other you know, terror outfits are trying to grow roots in Tamil Nadu? Yes, ma'am, for various complex reasons. One, Tamil Nadu itself, it has a long history. It is not that it is happening now. Long history of Alluma, uh, the Coimbatore blast, the Madurai, different, different things. Even Tamil Nadu was in a way connected to the Sri Lankan Easter bombing attack also. Now, when, when, when you ha need to have that extra sense of uh, administrative efficiency to keep them under control, 
in DMK's period in the last 16 months, this is again coming on the rise. That is our basic allegation. The DMK is not focusing on the internal security of the state. You know, the BJP and the DMK keep saying this repeatedly, that since the BJP and since you, Mr. Anamalai, have taken over the Tamil Nadu BJP, there's always been this charge that's been leveled, that there's an attempt to communalize things in Tamil Nadu. Like you mentioned, one particular community, religious appeasement. These aren't the elements that are typically associated with Tamil Nadu politics. And that the BJP, according to the DMK, is now bringing in communal elements into politics and communalizing Tamil Nadu. This is a simple case of uh, somebody sitting in a very high pedestal and giving moral lectures to themselves. The DMK has to just look in the mirror. Mm. Whatever cases we have taken, we have taken only in public interest. We are not accusing one particular community of indulging in terror. We are accusing of certain people belonging to a certain community of indulging in terror, please take action against that person only. DMK somehow confuses protecting that person and protecting that religion. For them both are same. For us it is not same. An accused is an accused. Take action against that accused. But somehow DMK believes taking against this action against this XYZ in a Lavanya uh, case in Tanjaur or in the Coimbatore blast case, they believe taking action against this individual also means going against that community. So I'm trying to protect both of them. That is, this is where the fundamental difference between DMK and BJP is there. We are not against any community, but we are against the certain elements belonging to a particular community. So how can you... How can do you cherry pick? Do you cherry pick these issues? Is these issues which are, uh, you know, religious based, religion based rather, being pushed forward rather by the BJP in Tamil Nadu? You tell me, madam. You tell, give me one example of a Hindu, uh, maybe indulging in uh, religious conversion over the last many years. If it is true, if it is happening, if I am not picking it up, then you can accuse me of siding with one particular community. You show me one particular bomb blast or something of this nature happened, maybe the accused was belonging to some community in Tamil Nadu, BJP was conveniently not picking up that story. All things we are picking up is only creating a lot of discomfort for DMK. DMK has to understand, after they came to power, the ministers were openly and doing openly and doing polarization. We came to power because you voted for me. We came to power because this religion voted for me. The speaker of uh, the Tamil Nadu assembly, he went and said DMK is in power because your community voted for me. We never said anywhere. We never discriminated a Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim. We are calling a spade or a, sp uh, a spade a spade. DMK is trying to confuse the cause and the effect. In this case, taking action against an accused doesn't mean taking action against the religion. For DMK, they look both of them together. That is where the confusion for them is. But not the reality there. is, if you look on the ground in a state like Tamil Nadu, um, as far as the voting is concerned or in elections, it is the DMK that delivers. At the end of the day, people choose them. So even if you accuse them of religious appeasement, does it really translate to anything on the ground? Votes come to them. Elections, they continue to sweep and win. I will not agree to this proposition that DMK is a natural choice for Tamils, madam. You, you just imagine. At least Dravidian parties. Uh, Can we agree that Dravidian parties yes, are? But with respect to ADMK, it is slightly different. Yes, maybe till 2021 it was a case. But the DMK is never a popular choice of the Tamil masses. They have lost more elections than they won. It's a fact. This time also, despite 10 years in power, anting, riding a huge anti incumbency against the ADMK, they just came to power with only 1.5% extra votes. So, but that there is a tectonic shift in Tamil Nadu politics. Maybe 2024 when the elections happen, I might have something to counter your argument saying that BJP is on the rise. But as of now, I can say DMK is a vanning force. Without a doubt, it is decelerating, it is coming down. Because people want a credible alternative. Maybe BJP is emerging as that alternative. It's a matter of time. Let's bring up another issue that's made headlines right now, which is that the DMK uh, has raised the issue of CAA. And in court has said, that the CAA doesn't cover Sri Lankan Tamils. Is that something that the Tamil Nadu BJP also agrees with, that Sri Lankan Tamils should also be raised and included in CAA? The two things, madam. Tamil Nadu BJP, we believe the Sri Lankan Tamils have come here at different points of time. One based on an agreement between India and Sri Lanka in 1963, uh, a set of uh, uh, Tamils living in the upper uh, hills. We call them as Malayaga Tamils. They came, mm. close to about 5 lakh people. There is one issue. Second, the Sri Lankan uh, they use the word called the Northeast Tamils who came at different points of time in civil war and different fights. There are two categories of Sri Lankan Tamils in Tamil Nadu. Of course, we believe it's a BJP Tamil Nadu stand also. And we have to find a way to integrate them into Tamil society, even give them citizenship, depending on the government's established viewpoint. Mm. The Citizenship Act is very clear in India, madam. Citizen Act, Act is very clear. You come, you live in a certain point of time in our country. 
then you are eligible to become a citizen. There is a process. Mm. DMK is trying to do this only for the sake of politics because there is no point to confuse CAA to this. CAA is clearly for a persecuted minority. It's very clear. A certain segment of persecuted community, community not necessarily Hindu, Hindu, Sikhs and other different religions, coming from certain countries who have declared them as Islamic Republic, they are coming here, one time measure, they are getting citizenship. With it is to Sri Lanka and Tamil, the whole history is different. Hmm. 1963 something persecuted. has happened, 1963 something it's happened, different points of time. 1963 was an agreement between India and Sri Lanka, where we agreed to take 5 lakh people. So our heart is there for the Sri Lankan Tamils. Of course the government of India, there is a natural process and BJP firmly believes we have to integrate them, we have to give them citizenship. Because each of the issues are slightly complicated. Somebody came with the official support of Sri Lankan government here, somebody came without the support, they came in civil war. Now confusing all of this together and trying to bring them under CIA ambit will create more confusion. What was this, uh, the, the DMK government doing till now? They were sleeping till now. After BJP started raking up Tamil Nadu issues connected to Sri Lanka, where I myself went to Sri Lanka, met all the Sri Lankan Tamils there. Recently we went to Uti, met all the Sri Lankan brothers who have come, as, come in 1978, the plantation laborers from Sri Lanka to Tamil. After the protest became a huge success, which made, which made the Tamil Nadu government to revoke their GO of giving tanti to the, uh, uh, giving a parts of the land back to the forest department. Now to counter it, they are doing this drama in Supreme Court. Every Tamilian knows this is DMK's one more drama of trying to confuse our Tamil people. It's a very emotive issue, but in Tamil Nadu, when you yes, talk about Sri Lanka Tamils, I want to bring it to what we've seen in the Supreme Court also in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. What is your stand on what's happened really? The fact that you've had the convicts being released right now, because there are two aspects to it. If you go to Tamil Nadu, there'll be people who always say that, you know, this is a step that's been taken. There's a lot of sympathy for them. Here in Delhi, a lot of people come and ask me, you know, how is it that there's sympathy for people who have killed, who have assassinated a former prime minister and so many others who died in that uh, bomb, bla in that blast in Sri Perambudur? So what's your standard? There is no sympathy per se for anybody, madam. They are convicted criminals, full stop, no doubt about are that. Are they terrorists? Would you deem them terrorists? Of course they are terrorists, uh, but the Supreme Court has used this extraordinary jurisdiction, which is very rarely used. They have used that extraordinary jurisdiction. They have released one person at one time, followed by six people at the second time. So we respect the Supreme Court's verdict because it's chosen to take that extraordinary uh, measures, whatever it is having in its control. Doesn't mean... Tamil people have sympathy, Tamil people are accepting it. Tamil people are very clear, look, they are terrorists, they are convicted felons, a different courts, Dada court, they gave them, they gave them death sentence, which was uh, approved by the High Court, which was approved by the Supreme Court at different points of time. So nobody is calling them innocent. Our stand is very clear. They are terrorists, they are convicted terrorists. Supreme Court has released them. We will agree with Supreme Court's verdict, doesn't mean we have got any soft corner for these people. Now, you have to understand among these six people who got released, four people are not Indian nationals. Yes. They are foreign nationals. And DMK government, you will, first time after the Pere Rivalan got released, the Stalin himself, our chief minister, went, hugged him, put him shawls and did all kinds of drama. The Tamil society themselves revolted at this. So you definitely believe and agree that's wrong? 100%. All of us believe. In fact, we washed out. This time the chief minister kept quiet. He didn't even go near them. This clearly shows People's opinion are somewhat very different from how the DMK government is choosing to believe. This is what people's opinion is. I, I want to raise one more issue, which is, uh, uh, Anamalai, you're someone who comes very often to Delhi. You're there in uh, Tamil Nadu as well. There's a clear divide in how the BJP is perceived in a state like Tamil Nadu. Is there a difficulty for the BJP to, you know, kind of take a middle ground on some issues nationally and then change their stand regionally on the issue of Hindi, for example? There's a lot of talk about the BJP having a very different stand otherwise, but in Tamil Nadu, a very different stand. The stand is always the same, madam. Uh, the new and education that's, that's policy... An uh, yeah, uh, just to take Hindi as an example again, the new education policy is very clear. You read th three languages. Tamil Nadu wants, also wants to learn th three languages. It is clear Hindi is optional. Tamil Nadu also says Hindi should be optional. There is no confusion anywhere. The confusion is the DMK media, uh, the media is owned by the DMK party, they going to town trying to dig unnecessary issues, trying to make it a big propaganda, which fails after a point of time. There is no confusion with respect to BJP stand in Delhi and with respect to BJP stand in Tamil Nadu. So you don't find any difficulty in actually bridging that gap because there is always this sentiment in Tamil Nadu uh, on any issue really where, uh, uh, you know, when I speak to people on the ground and you ask them about any issue, they say Modi, Modi is to blame. How do you bridge that and how do you address that problem? I think, 
Um, you, are, you, are, you are a very, yeah, very senior journalist. You, you must have met and spoken to a lot of people. And uh, the image of Tamil people saying uh, Modi ji is to be blamed, that is one, some DMK 2-3 fellows, they have that image of doing it. When last time Honorable Prime Minister visited Madurai Dindukal, 1.4 million tweets, 14 lakh people, they said Vanakkam Modi. So every time Modi ji is coming to Tamil Nadu, it is on a different trajectory. And Tamils love Modi ji the most. Else this Kasi Tamil Sangamam which is happening now, which is a huge hit, tremendous hit, 25,000 people registered. Now the registration is closed. Now a lot of people wanted this Kasi Tamil Sangamam phase 2 to start, even before the phase 1 is completed. This only shows the kind of love our Prime Minister is enjoying in Tamil Nadu. 2024, election should be a marker year. So that is the time you will really see the depth and love which the Tamil people would give to Honorable Prime Minister. My final question to you, uh, uh, Namale, in your vision for Tamil Nadu as the BJP chief uh, of the state, when do you really see the BJP making such inroads that you will be uh, forming the government in the state? Yeah, we because tell 2026. You're, you're far away from it. It's a distant dream. Uh, right you know, now, yes? Of course, uh, there is nothing wrong in having a dream, but 2026 is, is, a, is a year. Tamil Nadu politics is one year is enough. I mean, it is not that you need 10 years, you need 20 years, you need 30. You just need that narrative, correct narrative, and you need to have that correct connect with the public. You need to have that sink happening in the ground, which has started to happen now. It's a matter of time, because 2026 would be the time. I firmly believe Tamil Nadu BJP would be in a big position to win a lot number of seats. Whether it is going to form a government, I can't say as of now, but it requires our hard work. Uh, our Karyakarta's hard work and meeting people and everything, which we are willing to put in that hard yard. But I am confident, 2024, you will see that green shoot in terms of vote share, in terms of number and everything. 2026 would be a very, very satisfying election for us. With, you, will, you will clearly say that BJP has arrived in Tamil Nadu. Hopefully, if I'm still in journalism, I will hold you for this and maybe we'll meet in 2026 and see if that's true. Thank you very much, Anna Malai, for joining us. All the very best to your party for the MCD election, the Gujarat election, a lot that's coming up. That's all from us here on this India Today exclusive. Thanks very much for tuning in.